Now, about their amino acid restrictions in order to attempt to starve the tumors. There were different attempts to do that, for example, to starve with glutamine, to starve with methionine, because these tumors, they uh, really take much, they really need much more of these amino acids than normal cells. That means if we uh, don't give them these amino acids, the tumor must mm, maybe not die, but at least stop growing. But in reality, it's very difficult to follow these diets because in most of the products there are enough amino acids to still supply the tumor. And uh, you need a specially produced products that will be lacking these amino acids. But there is an, some other nice approach when we give their enzymes that will destroy these amino acids in the body. For example, some blood cancers like lymphomas or uh, acute uh, lymphoblastic uh, leukemia, they may be treated with asparaginase. Uh, this is the enzyme with, which will destroy asparagine. That is amino acid necessary for these tumors. And it really improves their uh, outcomes in these patients. Also, some tumors are dependent on arginine. For example, this is liver cancer, this is melanoma, and this is pancreatic cancer. But still, we don't have effective drugs to aim this spot in tumor metabolism. Next, uh, we know that folates may be used by some tumors, especially if we are talking about acute lymphoblastic lymphoma, ALL. And we can use the metatrexate that will block folate and um, it will stop the tumor. So, as you see, there are, some there are already some drugs that can be used to aim metabolism of the tumors but still more research is needed. And in this case, of course, it's not very good to uh, take the folate supplements. Next, fasting. Fasting very, is a very interesting topic. You can see sometimes some uh, videos in YouTube, for example, that will say, oh, there is a patient, he was doing fasting and he healed his cancer. First of all, we don't know what healed his cancer because it may be uh, placebo if he has a strong fate. Uh, it can be maybe he's taking some other herbs, maybe something else in combinations. We don't know what helped him. Because sometimes we see the really uh, interesting situations when the cancer is gone itself or it's gone uh, after uh, the chemotherapy, even the most aggressive cancer that is never gone. But here, and it's gone. And we don't know actually what's going on. Maybe this is the uh, tumor type, uh, some... Um, individual properties of this tumor. Maybe this is a properties of this uh, human, his immunity. There are many factors that we can't predict for now. But in most cases, uh, the fasting doesn't heal the cancer. And in some patients, fasting may, may be very dangerous because if they are already in a malnourished situation and we, he will fast, he'll be even more malnourished. The cancer will take their last from the body, but the body will be starving a lot. But anyway, most of the studies found that uh, their fasting may help to improve their um, effectivity of chemotherapy, radiation therapy in animals. And by the way, we have some uh, trials on humans with cancer. For example, they are small trials. And um, mostly what we get from there is that starvation may help with adverse reactions and improve the quality of life. Uh, meaning that starving for 24 hours before chemotherapy and 24 hours after chemotherapy may decrease the, for example, nausea, vomiting, uh, weakness, and um, the patients tolerate it better. Maybe because autophagy is activated, uh, that's why their usual cells won't get so much uh, chemo drug and the cancer cells will get more. There were some other studies that showed similar results 36 hours before, 24 hours after chemotherapy also helped uh, these patients. But they never but they never researched the effectiveness of chemotherapy in these cases, whether fasting improved the effectiveness or not. That's why these studies are not enough to do any conclusions. Of course, this topic is very interesting and for me it would be very interesting to know does starving really help these patients and what patients should be prescribed starving maybe. But in standards, in standard care, it's considered to be unethical not to feed the patient. That's why, and we don't know if it's really helping or not. That's why uh, it's not standard for now. 
by the way, there is the systematic review on animals of mice with cancer who did ketogenic diet, who did uh, their calorie restricted diet and intermittent intermittent fasting. And uh, they found that uh, there was improved uh, tolerability of uh, treatment in those uh, having ketogenic diet and those having uh, their calorie restriction. But for intermittent fasting, uh, there was not enough data to do any conclusions. But it's on mice. We still need more investigations on patients. Dear friends, in general, one of the best diets for today is considered to be a Mediterranean diet. And um, mainly because of its um, plant-based components. And uh, because they have a lot of uh, nutrients, vitamins, fiber, they have a lot of uh, anti-cancer phytochemicals inside. Also, seafood is uh, considered to be very good. And by the way, Mediterranean diet is considered to be very good for other conditions like high blood pressure, like diabetes. And uh, nutrition should be uh, chosen um, individually, depending on the patient characteristics, on his uh, diseases that he has, on uh, the localization of tumor, of the tumor type, on the treatment he's getting at this point of time, on the situation with his gastrointestinal tract, on his tolerability of these and that products. In general, cruciferous uh, vegetables may be very good, uh, linseed, uh, flaxseed oil, uh, their olive oil, iodine is very important, omega-3 is very important. Uh, always uh, check your vitamin D levels, maybe vitamin D supplementation may be needed. Don't forget about the food for the immunity and uh, don't forget about medicinal mushrooms. Always talk to your doctor, maybe consider the ketogenic diet in your situation. I know that it was a lot of information and uh, I'm sorry you did not get very precise steps, but I hope you got a lot of information to think about and to discuss with your medical professional. I wish you be healthy. I wish you have a good mood. My name is Dr. Igor Atabekov. Bye-bye.